Welcome, engineers, to 2.1.5 Moments. This is from one of my favorite movies of all time, The Sandlot. And two of my very dear friends, this was the first dance at their wedding. A magic moment. Uh, we're going to be talking today about moments and what moments mean, not just in life, but in engineering. Uh, a moment is a turning something. And so specifically, we're going to talk about equilibrium. So imagine a seesaw, like the, the torques are balancing one another. We're going to talk about equilibrium within moments. Clockwise torques equaling counterclockwise torques and how you can use that idea to figure out how much force is acting on an object. So where we're going with this, kind of fast forwarding, we've got a truss and it's simply supported because there's a pin, uh, a pin right here because it's got the two forces and there's a roller on this side. It's got all these different beams. And the question is, I wonder how much force is on each one of these, right? There's a downward force, so you, and it's closer to D, so you think that there's a downward force on D, and you're actually torquing it this way. I bet, wild theory is that, I bet this reaction, this pin at A, I bet it's holding it down. I bet it, I bet it's not supporting this. I bet it's actually, the whole thing wants to flip over to the right, and I bet A has to hold it so it doesn't go flying off. So I don't know, that's just a, a thought. But we'll be able to figure that out using uh, balancing of torques today. So let's get started. A torque, first of all, is just force times distance. Uh, torque, I sometimes say the word torque and moment, they mean the exact same thing. Force times distance. Um, you can push on a wrench, and this is not going to do anything. You need to, it's the, not only is it the moment when we, we say torque, it's the force times the distance, it's the force that's perpendicular to the lever arm. So, for instance, right here, if you push on this, um, not going not gonna to work. Uh, maybe, maybe sometime you've gone to a door, and you push on the wrong side of the door, and, and you are not very effective at opening that door, because you're like, you're pushing on the pivot, so you need to be a certain distance away from the pivot, and you need to be pushing perpendicular to the pivot. So that's how you calculate moments, is the force that's perpendicular. That doesn't work. you got to push at a right angle, or at some angle, such that there's a, a perpendicular component to your force from the lever arm. And this distance to the pivot, this would is what we're measuring when we try to calculate the torque. Or moment, M, capital M, that, that's what they use. And when I'm, in, when I'm talking to physics, I use, this is the Greek letter tau. It's like a backwards J. Don't say backwards J. It's totally unbecoming of people of your stature. It is tau, not backwards J. Tau. Force perpendicular times the distance. So this force times this distance, that's how you figure out the torque. Uh, the units for torque, um, if since it's force times distance, it's pound, in, pound feet or foot pounds. It doesn't matter what way you put those in. Um, Newton meters in, uh, in, in metric system. Most people, it's funny, most people say pound feet, and people will also say foot pounds. So, like, in inside of the, the English language, these are kind of, um, you can switch them around pretty easily, but nobody, and I mean nobody, says meat and neuters, meter newtons. They all say newton meters. That is just the way it is. This one is not commutative, doesn't get switched around. Uh, the direction. If we go clockwise, and we've talked about this before, when we turn uh, clockwise, this is going to be a negative moment. When we turn counterclockwise, we're going to say that that's a positive moment.
because of like mathematics on that Cartesian plane when you go uh, counterclockwise, that's positive. We're going to stay this way. Uh, you could use your right hand on this stuff. It's kind of neat if you want. Um, we use the right hand rule in engineering quite a bit, especially in electricity and magnetism if you go down that route later on in life. But let me just show you how the right hand rule works. If, if I'm, see if I'm pushing this down and I turn my thumb points towards me, if you like, if you do this on your screen right now and you put, curl your fingers in the direction of the force and you see how your thumb points towards you, that's a positive. I do it this way. Here I'm curling my fingers and my thumb points away from me. This is a negative torque or a negative moment. Uh, we'll do a couple of them real, real quick here. If this is 20 pounds and you're a nine inch wrench, how much torque are you creating or moment? So it's just 20 pounds times nine inches. So 20 times nine is 180 inch pounds or I N and you put a dot L B. If you have two units that you're combining like that, you put a dot in between them to represent they're two separate, and that's a torque. 180 inch pounds. Uh, if you want to do it in feet, you can absolutely do it in feet as well. Twenty pounds times one foot. So that's twenty foot pounds. Foot dot L B. That represents torque. What if you push on something at an angle, right? Um, now, that lever arm in this case is going to be 3 inches. So when you do this, this torque, force perpendicular times distance. So my force is still 20 pounds, and this distance is 3 inches. Even though, that this, even though this is 1 foot right here, the perpendicular distance away from it is 3. So this is going to be 60 inch pounds in this case. Here we've got a little crazier one. Not that bad. This is still perpendicular, so we can still use 20 pounds. But now we're going to use 18 inches, because that's the total distance away. So uh, that's going to be 360 inch pounds. Because remember, we're in inches and we're in pounds. Hey, this stuff isn't so bad. Uh, wheel and axle, it's kind of the same idea. Because that's a, um, a torque. If you're pushing at 100 newtons and you've got a distance here, I would assume, of 50 centimeters. So to figure out the torque here, uh, it's going to be 100 times 50. So that's going to be 5,000. Newton centimeters. If you wanted to change 50 into like meters, so that's be 0 0.5. So that would be 50 Newton meters. So either one of these is acceptable when you're doing this. Now, what if we get a little saucy and we start pulling at an angle? Here's where what we just learned in our, in our last chapter, our last lesson, we talked about um, components of forces. What you're going to have to do is you have to find the force in the x direction. We well, don't really need to find that one. What you really need to find is this one, the force in the y direction, because that's the one that's perpendicular to that distance. So I'm going to go back to Sokotoa. right now. Uh, this is going to be the opposites, and I know the hypotenuse. So the one that uses opposite and hypotenuse is sine. So I'm going to say the sine of 50 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, 100. So this force in the y direction, I take 100 times the sine of 50. Let's do that real quick. 100 sine 50. Bear with me as my computer, my calculator boots. I get 77. Uh, that's 77, what am I in, pounds, newtons, newtons, 77 newtons. So to figure out the torque, it's the force perpendicular times the distance. And now this is the perpendicular force, this 77 newtons right here. So 77 
times that same distance, if you remember before, of 50 centimeters or 0 0.5 meters. You could use either of those distances here. So half of 77 is 35, 38. Uh, Newton meters. So now we're throwing sine and cosine into the mix. So if you are pulling at an angle, you do have to find. I didn't use this, so I didn't. I didn't look for the force that was like parallel to it. I, the only one I really needed is the force perpendicular. So I can save myself having to do another thing. Just I just use the sine, and that I'm cool. You just need the force perpendicular if you're looking for the torque. Uh, equilibrium. Um, when you're in equilibrium, that means a couple of. It means in, in in engineering world, that means three things. For high school engineering, it means three things. Thing number one, you're not going left or right. If you add up all the forces in the x direction, those are going to be equal to zero. Like all the left hand pulls equal all the right hand pulls. That's thing number one that equilibrium means. Uh, it also means that everything pulling up equals everything pulling down. If you add up all the forces in the y direction, that equals zero. Right? And a lot of times we say um, positive is up, negative is down. So you'll have positive and negative. Same with over here. Pulling to the positive direction, pulling in the negative direction. So 5 plus negative 5, they're going to be equal to 0. And then torques. All of the uh, positive torques, the counterclockwise, are going to equal all of the negative torques. If we add up all of the moments, those are going to be equal to 0 as well. So these are the three things that equilibrium means to us in high school. In college, there's one more, and it's just Z, the Z axis, because everything in the world is three dimensions. So in college, just everything, all the forces in the Z are equal to zero. So that's that's all, the only one difference that you versus someone in college is going to see. Now, here's what it means on a, like, here's an equilibrium on a seesaw and what that means. The torques. So here we've got a torque. This bear is turning it this way because here is our pivot. This bear is turning it that way. Now, one of these is positive and one of these is negative. Let's see if we can figure that out. Clockwise ones are negative. So I'm going to change it to blue to just show that it's a negative torque. Counterclockwise torques are positive. So I'll change it to red to show that it's positive. So these bears, I would assume, are going to, like, weigh something. So here you go. Bear on the left is 25. Bear on the right is 40. And the question is going to be, how far away do you have to put that bear such that it balances? And we're going to, here's a great application of adding up all the moments is going to be equal to zero. Here is a negative torque, and the torque moment, I mean, I'll just start writing with the word M, the moment is going to be the force times the distance. So the force is 40, and the distance is unknown. And that's negative. This torque over here, moment, the force is 25 times the distance of 4, and that's a positive, and that's 100 foot pounds. So I over up here, I'm going to add these together. So I'm going to take a positive 100 and a negative 40x, add them all up, and that equals zero. And we can totally solve for how far away to put it. Bring that over, 100 equals 40x. So that means that x, uh, it's like 10 over 4 or 2.5 feet because we're operating in feet so how far away do you put that big bear put it 2.5 feet and that um, seesaw should balance 
I'm going to pause right here because the next thing that we're going to do, it takes a little bit more and I'm going to break that into a second video. So suffice to say that um, here we are into equilibrium and how do we use the equilibrium when it comes to moments and torques? Clockwise torque equals counterclockwise torque. And this one's pretty straightforward because there's only one force on each side. So it's, but you could have multiple torques, you know, like two positive ones and three negative ones. And we're going to get there coming up.